So on today on Stool Talk, we have with us uh, Mr. DeAndre Gaston. Um, this is a kind of a special interview to me just because um, I have seen from the start to now the process in um, his business, his brand, his gym, um, his discipleship even, um, as, as you would say, because um, he's not doing it how a person over there might do it. He's not doing it how the next person is doing it. He's making his own way. He's doing it how he wants to do it. And he's allowing God to be able to use him. And he's being so influential in the community. And that's one thing I love. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good, doing well, doing well, doing well. Man. Thank you. You're doing a good thing, man, because even the buzz that you had, and I don't know if you knew before that you opened up, uh, you know, uh, talking to uh, Sierra, Honey Bun, Janice, you know, and they all was supporting you, you know, on your big grand opening, seeing how the city was, you know, opening up to you about opening up. And even in the area over there is much needed as well, man, just to see what you have done, man. How did this journey start? Did you always want to do a uh, gym or be in fitness or like that? How did this journey start for you? Uh, I didn't, man. I didn't always want to do this. Uh, I think uh, what what led to go time grind period that the whole business was I had I had a three part goal I knew it was three things I wanted to do one is I wanted to be a community developer that was the main thing I wanted to do. I wanted to see hoods and communities like mine I came from just develop and come become like you know oasis you know I had read about uh, ancient Kush and all the you know. A uh, 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 great um, black communities, and I just felt like we could do it again. Yeah, so I wanted yeah. to be a community developer. On the other hand, I wanted to uh, I wanted to be a, I wanted to be a, a successful entrepreneur. And the third thing that I wanted to do was uh, I wanted to speak. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to be a, a motivational, inspirational speaker. And when I got finished trying to mold them things together and figure out how. It, how they was gonna come together. I took the gift that I knew best, the thing I was certified and learned in, which was fitness, and um, and um, came up with Go Time Grind, which is really just a a, a, a movement that's um, focused on bringing health and wellness to uh, to the hood. So um, in, in the process of you opening up your gym, getting your entrepreneurship and your brand together, what um what um obstacles or different things did you face? Um, uh, you you said in the process of build of building the business. Yeah, and opening that up or getting it started, or it just went through smooth. Oh no, 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 no! Bunch of bunch of things, man. Um, it's just uh. I think, I think, I think, I think it's just, it's just, it's just a dog eat dog world sometimes. You know what I mean? And, uh, when you're trying to do business and when you want to limit it, um, when you're dealing with limited funds, it's real hard, especially when everybody is trying to get, get, get an extra buck out of it. You know what I mean? When you're dealing with the big companies, even buying equipment, uh, 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 people trying to get over it. You know, you you, you you get things that you don't want things. I just bought a, a piece of equipment the other day. It cost a thousand dollars just to send it back. You know, and it mm. cost two thousand. But so many downfalls like that, and I see, you know, um, how I was gonna be able to afford this and make this movement. Different certifications we had to get, um, and them costing a lot. Uh, and then I think the hardest thing is trying to uh, work on the business while I'm working in the business. That's yeah. I'm telling you, the hardest thing, man. That's the hardest thing. So how did your uh, faith play a factor in that? Because I know it takes faith to not see it, but know that you believe that it's going to be there, but not seeing it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of them not being seen. So how did your faith uh, take place in this, uh, with starting this as well? It was everything. If I if I had faith, then uh, I would have never did it. But I just I'm just convinced that the key is to um, you got to move. You got to get in the movement of God. For real. Yeah. 
when I when I'm in line and I'm in lane with, in in the lane with God, I know that um all of the heavens is really uh at my as accessible to me. So everything yeah. gonna come into play. Uh, you know, one of my one of my favorite um, scriptures. He tell him um, Jesus is talking to him, and he tell his disciples uh, that if they worry about the kingdom of God and they seek that and they seek all this righteousness, then everything they're looking for is gonna be added into them. So yeah. I just got, I just had to, and it was it was a battle because yeah. I just had to focus on. Am I gonna start thinking about the numbers and the money? And it's still to this day. This always the struggle. I start thinking about the numbers and the, and and the money and the factors and the business. Or am I gonna think about the mission and the cause and the purpose? If I stay focused on that, this other stuff don't gotta come into line because I know I'm moving. I'm, I'm fighting a winning fight. I'm you know I'm moving with God. You know what I mean? And that's uh. That's just what kept me going. Stop looking at the numbers, stop counting that, and just start worrying about people being put in the situation that God intended them to be put in. Feel me? Where did that come from, having this wisdom, knowledge, and relationship with God? Did you grow up in the church? Is it something that you had to find for yourself and grab? Um, it was I was I was molded. I was molded in the flame. So uh, early on in life, born in 1986, family kind of rough. Mama, teenage mother, uh, daddy, um, was dealing going in and out of prison, dealing with drugs and uh life was rough. Uh mom ended up going to jail. Uh, when she got out of when, when my mama got out of jail, she uh changed her life around, moved across the street from the church. Um that's when I was introduced to the church. Uh, so I went to church, man, a lot from when I was like uh probably like eight all the way up to like 13 or 14. And, 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 I, and I really believed it and it was really influential on my life. A lot of seeds was planted that didn't really come into fruition until later on in life. So I go through life and um, get to chasing some money. And um, I don't know if everybody know, but I ended up going to prison. Went to prison for an aggravated robbery and flawless assault. Uh, and did a lot of time, sentenced to 16 years and, and, and did that time. And, and in that time, as you know, when all them seeds that was planted when I was young, that's when they came to fruition. When I had to go through the struggle, go through the flames, I had to lean on God through it all. Yeah. And one thing about my experience is it was hard. It was rough and it was painful, but God was with me every step of the way, raising me and developing me and building me um, ideas and new strengths and this stuff that was really meant to uh, break me down build me up so I knew coming out of the prison that uh if God could keep me through this God yeah. could keep me through anything so I think my faith was just on fire when I got out yeah and, and then like the scripture say no weapon formed up against me shall prosper it didn't say that the weapon was gonna form but it say it's not gonna prosper it's not gonna kill you it's not gonna you know take you out because God is with you and God is for us who can be against us so that's good that you saying that because a lot of times people deal with different situations they look at their situation but it ain't in the situation it's in what you do with it how close you lean to God and like you said the seeds that was planted was planted on good ground so they was gonna have to come because God word don't come back to you void so that's good that you saying that and then what i like about your brand and your advertisement and how you post with your business is you speak the word you work the word so you speaking the word to your clients to all your followers and you work in a kind of coalition the same thing as as i'm working out working those muscle spiritual exercises because you working the word by saying it and the word is going to be somebody's strength because a lot of people they battle from that uh, i want to be following god but i'm worried about what the world say what would you say to somebody that's struggling or may have that i don't know how i can go after god because i'm worrying about it or they might not know how to go after god what would you say to that um uh. Um, I think, um, I think, man, um, I think a big part of it, man, first is just, um, really just getting down. What, what, what made it easy for me to really get with God, right? And be confident about being with God was really seeing who he was. Yeah. Really seeing who he was, 
stripped of all the tradition, right? Stripped of all of the uh, ritual and everything that come along with it. Who is God? And when I when I when I really looked at it and I seen it, you know, from the scripture and from my life and experience, and uh, I just seen that God is a liberator. God is about uh, setting the captive free. Yeah. And if you and once I seen that, and I seen God as a hero, um, you got to be with that. That got to be the mission. That got to be the push. And now that I see that he on this mission um, and I see what he doing, it's a beautiful, it's a good thing. And it's it's a well-respected thing. Like you can't move like God and not be respected. Yeah. You cannot be liked because you, um, because you, 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 you tearing up some, some type, you know, some, some schemes and some plots and you're getting in yeah. the way of some, captivity and some and some stuff that's going down but you're going to be respected who yeah. don't respect uh a creator yeah who don't respect a liberator you you going to respect them you might not like it but you don't know my impact was there so anybody out there that's um struggling with fighting for some type of approval and then fighting to be with god you missing the point because once you start moving like god they're going to respect and, and many of them gonna love it. What yeah. You doing? You know? And you're gonna lose the ones that ain't supposed to be in your life. So how do you balance work, your brand, uh, your ministry, your gym? Um, because I know you pour so much into everybody else. How do you take time off for yourself to make sure you good and make sure that you get re-strengthened? Uh, it's a battle. It's a battle. It's probably my biggest battle, for real. Uh, but I stay... Uh, I stay in nature a lot, man. Um, my uh, my prayer walks is the, is, the, is my bread and butter. Um, you always catch me dipping off in the middle of the day, especially at the end of the day. I'm always dipping off into a nature trip by yeah. myself, walking, praying, connecting with God, lining up first mentally, then um, then um, spiritually, and um. We got, you know, getting on the same mainframe, trying to decompress and just stay where I need to be, keeping what's important, keeping the main thing the main thing. You know what yeah. I mean? And I've seen the video, uh, you might have been on the run that day. You had on a gray shirt, you was running, you was talking about somebody in your family that I don't know if they passed or they were sick, but you were saying, you was telling everybody, like, we got to wait, uh, quit waiting until we speak these things and saying these prayers and we got to start early time. That, man, I watched that several times because that's so good. And we got to stop waiting to trials and tribulation come sickness or infirmities and all that come and start praying them prayers and, uh, you know, seeking God and being able to cast and rebuke all different things before that time period come. And it's like messages like that that people need to hear because they're not hearing it from somebody that looked like us. They're, they're hearing it from other people that's been involved with church. So now they might have done with something that got them involved with church hurt. So they really ain't feeling it. And then some people is using church for negativity. So it's making the rear of the pureness seem like people's questioning it. But when you authentic, when it's pure, when it's real, like what you're doing, people see it and people be able to gravitate toward you're going to win lives and you're going to win souls. Even in your gym, I can see that and believe that even with what you're doing with your ministry, man. And it's like, it, it, it's effective. And I'm I'm all here, all the way down here in Atlanta and know what you're doing up there just by seeing and hearing that because you're doing what the Bible said, be doers of the word. You know, you're being a doer of the word while you're getting them strong physically and mentally and they don't even know or some of them that probably do know. And that's what sets you apart from the ordinary and the regular. Um, what programs and different do you have like for the youth? Because I know a lot of them need what you got as well. Right, 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 right. Definitely, man. Uh, uh, I, I was working with the youth all summer, pretty much. I'm ended up, I'm finishing up my last uh, week of my summer program. This coming a week, um, I work with some kids at the college up here. Uh, but they was high school kids, but they on campus for the summer learning. You know, just the college lifestyle. They teaching them. Uh, and pretty much I'm following the same blueprint every time I'm getting with the youth. You know, uh, I'm teaching a few uh, kids boxing, but uh, I teach them fitness. 
Yeah. I teach them the basics of nutrition because it's key. You need your body right. You need your diet right. What you put in you is determining how you even think and how, your, the clarity of your mind, and your gut health, right, and everything. So I'm teaching them that. But then on the other hand, I'm teaching them the, uh, the socio-political factors that's going into um, health and wellness around us, right? Because I want them to, uh, you know what I mean? One, one thing about me, um, one thing that was hard, this is something you were saying, you were asking about like how to follow God. One thing that was hard for me to follow God was because it was, uh, it, it, it wasn't really about nothing. You know what yeah. I mean? Like gr growing up in church, it was like, be good and hope that you being good by the time God come back and then you go to heaven. Yeah. So, so, you just, so that's the only reason, you know, you just hope, hoping to go to heaven. And it really didn't have no real practical um, impact on life in the present. And so I ain't really see no struggle. And when I got to the when I got to the joint in prison and I, I started reading about Martin Luther King, and I started reading about Malcolm X, and I started reading about all, all the freedom fighters that came before us. I wanted a mission and a cause, but I'm like, what's the mission and the cause if um uh, only thing I'm suffering for is, is a crime I did? You know what yeah. I mean? I couldn't find a mission or a cause. And that, that's because I hadn't been taught about the struggle that was waging around me. Yeah. The things that was happening, all the different beats that was happening. I didn't know that the prison that I was sitting in was um owned by a multi-million dollar corporation that was looking at my test. My third, my test scores when I was in third grade to determine whether or not they was gonna build this prison that mm -hmm. I'm in. You know what I mean? So I didn't see that socio political struggle to even know what I could be a part of. And had I seen that, and somebody said, "Okay, this is what God is calling you to disrupt and overcome and build the kingdom of God uh, against," yeah. I would have had a vision. So I want to get these. Uh, I'm trying to get these kids and these babies this um this clarity yeah. you know what i mean this vision and this cause and this purpose early on yeah so you ain't just uh so your purpose ain't just um trying to look better than the next girl and yourself you on, on ig yeah you know what i mean and, and your purpose ain't just uh trying to throw up the next set of show you got the biggest blick on on, um, on on Snapchat. You know what I'm saying? You really got a cause. You really know what you're doing and why you're doing it. And uh, that's what I'm that's what I'm liking right now. I got a bunch of stuff, more stuff I want to do. Uh, and I'm about to unleash it real quick, man. Real quick, small stuff. And it's really all. all it's looking like a lot, gonna be a lot of what I'm doing. Just youth work, youth work, youth programming. Uh, short six week. Um. Uh, training slash mentoring camps, you know what I mean? Where I talk to them about uh, life and maturity and growth and the socio-political factors at the same time, developing them, athletes, uh, the couch potato kids that we just want to get fit, just a bunch of stuff like that, man. That's all, I, that's all I'm about to be doing this upcoming um, school year. And the last question before I get you out of here, but I wanted to say that to talk to touch on what you were just saying. God says that he's not the same God as he was yesterday. God, you know, reveals itself new each day. And a lot of times growing up, it was a lot of people. Some was ignorance because they didn't know ministers and preachers. They was only doing what they was taught, you know, doing what they was the norm, you know, but God revealing himself and he's showing up right now today saying that, no, you can do this and still be saved. You can do this and follow me. You ain't got it because like a lot of times people are like, don't do that. You're a Christian or you can't be around these people, you know, but God qualifies the unqualified and he calls us qualified. So it don't matter what our past was and how these people are looking down. That's why I said what you doing is important because people see the you don't even be bragging or you don't even be like a lot of times I see, I hear about what you're doing from people more as people like, yeah, this is my gym. We doing this. You ain't for that because you letting your light shine. You know, you allowing your light to shine. And that's what's, that's what's good about it too. Cause they will see, um, I did an interview with my cousin, Antoine Lunchman John saying you working him out good too on your thing. So I did mm -hmm. an interview. 
like that with him. And we were talking about the same things, pouring into the community and allowing what God put inside of you, because that's why I asked you them questions, because I know it's just not regular. I see the God in you, but I can know it's a reason why you move the way you move, because God is moving with you and you aligning with it. So uh, last question before I get you up out of here. What advice would you have for a, a, a young person or just a person mid-age maybe trying to find a niche or trying to go after something, whether it's entrepreneur or starting or creating a business or something like that? What advice would you have for him? Uh, find some people, find the specific people and help them. Yeah. If you do that, I'm saying a real help. Something you want, not some you think somebody might pay. Some you want, some you know they don't want. And help it find that problem and fix it. And stay focused on that. Before you do the numbers, before you do the uh the financial plan, before you weigh it all out, find these specific people, your target, and fix their life. Do that. Money and um purpose and everything else, the press, the news, everything else going to come right with it. So I'll tell us how we can follow you and, and follow what you're doing in your gym and all like that. Get your tags on your social media and stuff. Uh, go check out uh, De just, just go with DeAndre Gaston. Uh, D-E-A-N-D-R-E uh, Gaston. G-A-S-T-O-N. Uh, my main two active platforms is on IG and Facebook. Um, plug in right there. Go look at the website, www.gotimegrind.com. Check out the website. You can get at me on them. And, um, there are three places just to keep your eyes open for me um, right now and how we moving and what we doing. Uh, it's a few ways to support, I think, on the, on, on the website if you just want to um, help out. But we got a lot of stuff coming. I want to do some video um, training. I mean, some virtual training, some stuff on video. Uh, give us some people, uh, even in Atlanta, even in Atlanta base or wherever, you know, just work yeah. with some people. Uh, but especially if you're in Toledo, come by to the gym at 3403 Monroe, Ryan House Fitness Center. We got a uh, we got a lot going on. Classes jumping off on on the weekend. It's a 24 hour gym, and we just constantly trying to add value and push it up uh, to where people need it, man. So just come on, uh, get with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I really appreciate you and your time, your effort. I speak blessings into you, your gym, your business, your finances. May God increase. May he be able to pour on you fresh revelation, fresh anointing for what he has called you to do and walk and give you the capacity to be able to do it. Because when people think of where you located, they think about all the bad stuff that happened in that location. But God's going to be able to do something different with you and your gym and your ministry, man. And I just appreciate it. I thank you, bro. I receive it, man. I appreciate this opportunity and this platform. Keep up, keep using that uh, spotlight, man, to uh, do the work. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. All right, thanks, bro. Yeah.